For more on the Holmes trial, we now turn to CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. Ricky, thanks for being here. Thank you. So, walk us through the challenges in this case. What you have here, of course, is a scene of extraordinary carnage. You have 12 people who were killed. You have 70 people who were hideously injured, and you have their trauma. So what you have is a death penalty case, let's keep that in mind, mm. where we know he did it. Mm. So the question then becomes the defense, yeah. insanity defense. Extraordinary in a death case to ever have a defense of insanity. Usually when someone has a history of mental illness, as this young man certainly has, that many times, we've seen it just recently in the Chris Kyle death, that when Eddie Ray Routh mounted an insanity defense, the prosecutor sought life imprisonment, did not seek insanity. So here you have the situation where you've got planning, deliberation, lots and lots of time to put this plan into effect. And on the other side, long history of mental illness will become a big battle of experts here on a trial that will take many, many months. And there's something specific about the burden of proof in Colorado, right, when it comes to that defense? Colorado is one of now a minority of states that really has an advantage for the defense. And that's because the burden of proof in Colorado is that the prosecution must prove that James Holmes is sane beyond a reasonable doubt. There is not a burden here on the defense to have to convince the jury. The burden is all on the prosecution. Now, while we say advantage defense, on the other side of this is the horror of this crime. Right, and no one's disputing that he committed this crime. No one right. is disputing it. And what happened that night, let's think about it, 400 people in a theater, a very pleasing thing to do. We're going to see the opening, the midnight opening of The Dark Knight Rises. You're going to see a Batman movie. You have children there. You're on a date. You have families there. And one person decides that what he intends to do, under a delusion, perhaps, says the defense, mm. under premeditation, says the prosecution, is he is going to go in that theater and create carnage, the likes of which we haven't seen, except for the Newtown shooting, which comes about six months later, and then, of course, the Boston Marathon Terrorism Act. Ricky, before I let you go, real quick, we are also following the Sarnayev case. Uh, paint a picture for us the differences and the similarities. Well, I think that the similarity is obviously great carnage, horrific injuries and deaths, the type of testimony that takes these jurors into the war zone, with things that jurors should never have to see or hear. The difference, though, is quite profound. Here you have a real insanity defense. Whether or not the jurors accept it is another matter. There has never been any question of an insanity right. defense in Sarnayev. We know that Sarnayev knew precisely what he was doing, whether or not he was under the influence of his brother and therefore should be given life is a very separate question than looking at his guilt. The lawyers for Sarnayev said he was guilty and really want you to spare his life and not give him death. Here they are looking for much more than that. They're looking for a not guilty by reason of insanity. CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. Ricky, thank you so much. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you.